Hello YouTube, how are you doing? I trust by the mercy and grace of God. Everybody under the sound of my voice is doing great in the name of Jesus. Hi, my name is Bishop Nana Akusia Sipola coming to you once again on the Empowerment Culture Outreach. On this channel, we bring personal and spiritual development as well as hope and healing messages using tools of the Bible to build your resilience and your tenacity to worship God in spirit and in truth in order for you to be empowered spiritually, emotionally, mentally for the glory of God in the name of Jesus, building kingdom citizens here on earth, the glory of God. My word of hope today, I've entitled it what is your heart posture? What is your heart posture? The heart, it's an organ that is vitally, vitally important in our human lives. In fact, I believe in all our bodies, our heart and our mind, our brain, are the most important things we need to cherish. Because when that goes, nothing matters anymore. And when we come to the spiritual aspect of things, guarding our heart is a very important thing for us to do. Because the Bible says, out of it flows all the issues of life. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 tells us in the Bible, said guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life when we don't guard our hearts with all diligence a lot of things creeps inside the heart and those things can make or break us what is your heart posture how is your heart situated within your being within your soul, within your body? How is your heart positioned? The Bible also tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the heart harbors everything concerning our lives or lifestyle, so to speak. Guard your heart for out of it flows all the issues of life. What is your heart posture? What are the things that you put in your heart? What are the things you put in your heart? Whatever you put here and keep there, that's what goes on here. That's what comes out here. And that's what our actions also follow. What is your heart posture, precious listener? What are the things in your heart? Are they positive things or they are negative things? Are, are they things that are pure, that are gentle, that are kind, that are compassionate? Are they things that have the reverential fear of God? Are they things of wisdom, insight, and understanding? of the kingdom of God. Are the things in your heart in alignment with the word of God? What is your heart posture, precious listener? Today we're gonna talk about some of the things that we harbor in our hearts, or if we don't guard our hearts with all diligence, those things will creep in the heart and dwell there and that becomes what people see us project. That becomes our character because that becomes our behavior. Hence, that's what people judge us with. What is your heart posture? Are there things negative, painful, insulting? 
Are the things in your heart jealousy, envy, bitterness, resentment, judgmentality, yourself judgmentality, or judgmentality towards others? The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, chapter 5, verse 16, or 15 to 22 or 23. We're going to go into it and see what the Bible talks about there. But before we go there, what is your heart's posture? Do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? Or do you lean on your own understanding? Do you ask the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, to guide you, to guide you, to lead you, to teach you what is in your heart? What is your heart posture? See, the things that we harbor in our heart determines the things we do. So when we harbor evil in our heart, even as simple as an offense, if we let it wallow into our heart and stays there, the devil, our adversary, who is here to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that the devil, the thief, only comes. He comes for nothing, nothing good. But he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy Destroy our lives, destroy our destiny, destroy the godliness in us if we are not positioned right. If a heart posture is not positioned right, what is your heart posture? If we put fear in our heart, the devil dwells on us and he thrusts on it and he uses things that are not there to fear us, to scare us, to make us angry, to make us sorrowful to make us overwhelmed. But when we put things that are godly, things that are in alignment of the word of God, it's very difficult for the enemy to penetrate and put in the tears in a heart. What is your heart posture? It's your heart filled with jealousy. It's your heart filled with unforgiveness. It's your heart filled with Offenses. Offenses that you don't want to let go. Or is your heart filled with godliness, compassion, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control? What are the things you think about? What are the things you keep in your heart? Because they end up becoming the things you talk about. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what the Bible says. Apostle Paul says something in Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. He said, <clears throat> the good things that he wants to do, he cannot do. But the bad things that he doesn't want to do, that's the things he does. And he says, he's come to realize that it's not him, but it's the sin, the sinful nature, the things the enemy has put in his heart. You see, sometimes we think about things that are so negative and also impure. And we think it's just us thinking it. No, there's someone who puts those thoughts, those evil negative thoughts there. The devil, the adversary, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That is why we need to watch what we put in our heart. That is what the Bible tells us, that we should guard our hearts with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Sometimes we encounter things which are not so pleasant, which are painful, shameful, 
bring us sin, bring us guilt, bring us shame, bring us doubt, disgrace. Sometimes we go through neglect and rejection and that positions our hearts wrongly. We have our fear. We have our insecurity. We have our distrust. Sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't bounce back from the regrets or re the rejection or the painful things that are done to us or the painful things that we do ourselves to ourselves or to others. But no matter what it is, the mercies of the Lord are brand new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of God. So yesterday's old news, negative news, move past your past. His mercies are new every morning, the Bible says. There's a new chapter that needs to be opened in the book of life, in the journey of life. New greatness, new opportunities, new blessings, new favor, new wisdom, new understanding, new knowledge, new insights that the Lord bestows on us. But it is our responsibility to let go of the parts and let go handle it. Instead of us holding into that offense, and that offense ends up stealing and destroying our destiny. That offense ends up blocking our prayers. That offense ends up delaying our progress in life. That is why it is imperative for us to hold on to offense. That is why it is vitally important for us to forgive one another as the Lord forgives us. Jesus said to his disciples that they are each other's keepers. The disciples of God are not here. God is not here. The disciples of Jesus is not here. We are. Bishop Nana Chipola is. You, my precious listener, you are here now. Mary, Mary, Mavis, Rebecca, Ivy, Daniel, Jacob, John, Paul, Isaiah, Isaac, whoever you are, you are here. Be each other's keeper. Let us all be each other's keeper. Let us forgive one another as the Lord forgives us. Let us pray for one another, confess our sins to one another. When somebody confines in you and confesses their sin to you, it is not your business to go and tell everybody and their grandmother about it. It is not right to tell everybody and their grandmother who knows that person about it. You should learn to be private and confidential with people's business. The same way you wouldn't want people to spread your private conversations all across people who know them or people who know you. That's the same way they might not want you to spread their business that they confided in you to everybody else. What is your heart posture? I want you to pause and think for a minute. That's why I paused. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. We shouldn't be conformed to the patterns and the lifestyles of this world. As kingdom citizens, we are ambassadors of Christ, representing him here on earth. So we should boldly, courageously, fearlessly renew our mind from the negative things that the enemy puts in there, 
from the negative things we put in there, from all the negative things that, things that we see, we cannot forget them. But we can have the boldness and courage in Christ. The one that the Lord vested in us, you and I, when he created us, the boldness and the courage that he equipped in us when he created us, we need to hold on to that faithfulness, that fortification, that strength and power, that courage, that grace. To be able to release all negative things. Depression is a rampant. Everybody have certain times of depression. Yes, we get depressed once in a while. But when depression is not caused by chemical imbalances or things that are happening in our body that we don't have control of, but rather with things that we decide to think about, negative things we wallow about, things we don't want to forgive, pain we don't want to release, my dear listener, it is important for you and I to let go and let God and watch our heart posture because out of it flows the issues of life. All the things we put in our heart, that becomes our character. That becomes our name. That becomes the legacy we live. We leave behind when we leave this earth. That is why it is important for us to guard our heart. When David sinned with Bathsheba, he came back with his, sense, his senses and he repented and asked God to forgive him and to create in him a clean heart, a pure heart, and renew the right spirit within him. So even if it's a sinful nature that you have, Pray to God as David did, and that God will create in you a clean heart. He will renew the right, righteous spirit within you. And he says, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit away from me. And he goes on to say, Lord, if you help me and cleanse me with high stop, I shall be clean, and I will be whole, I will repent, and I will lead sinners into repentance. I.e., I will draw souls unto you, Lord. This should be a hard cry. As we watch a hard posture. It is important for us to sit down and take self-account or self-inventory. To see what our heart posture is. And if our heart posture is not right, we should be faithful and honest to ask God. First, for us to acknowledge that the heart posture we carry is not right. Because the transformation of every life is the acknowledgement. We can't change what we don't acknowledge. Example, if you have a headache and you say you don't have a headache, why should you take any medication for the headache if you don't have a headache? But if you have a headache and you admit you have a headache and you do something about it by taking a pill or taking some remedy that will cure or heal the headache, that is the first step, the acknowledgement. And the second part is the effort we take to change that situation. As we acknowledge a heart posture is not right, and we want to have it changed, we watch our behaviors, our actions, our words, our mindset. We have to be careful of what we think about, our thought process, our mindset and our heart set, because that's what channels our lives. That's what controls our lives. 
no matter who you are. It's important to watch your high posture. And when you find out it's not right, pray to God as David did. Ask God to, 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 to know, to renew your heart, to create in you a clean heart, a pure and contrite spirit. That's what the Lord is looking for. Ask him not to take his Holy Spirit away from you, but then ask the Holy Spirit to help you, guide you, order your steps so that you can walk in the right ways of God and do the will of God. If you find yourself like Apostle Paul did, and we all do once in a while, that the things you want to do, the good things you want to do, you cannot do, but the bad things you don't want to do, that's what you do. Then this is the time you pray for God to cleanse you, to create in you a clean heart, and to renew the right spirit within you. Renew your mind, my precious listener, by not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by renewing your mind to the word of God, in alignment of the word of God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19, it says, Now be, remember not the former things, the negative past, all the wrong things you did, all the wrong things that was done to you. Remember it not. But behold, the Lord said he's doing a new thing. Would you not perceive it? Leave those negative past behind and look forward to the great new mighty things the Lord is going to be doing in your life. Sometimes some of us focus so much on what's behind the negative past, so much that it blocks us from entering the blessed future the Lord has set for us. The new doors of opportunity, the new doors of blessings, the new favor that the Lord has opened for us. We miss it. We don't see it because we're so focused on the things behind. Apostle, Apostle Paul said he will not remember of the things behind, the past, but he's looking forward to the mark of glory, the crown of faith the Lord will give him when he gets to heaven, to the Lord. That's what he's looking for. The renewed life. My dear precious listener, I want you today, as you listen to me, to know your worth. And become the best version of yourself in accordance to the word of God. And see yourself as God sees you. Be bold, be courageous, be confident, and know your worth. Be re resilient and tenacious to embrace the love of God for your life. Renew your mind, my dear listener. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Do not conform to the things of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Give your life to the Lord. Give your heart, all your heart. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. That's what the Lord wants. A pure and contrite spirit. He wants the purity of your mind, the purity of your heart, the purity of yourself. Holiness and righteousness. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but it's with righteousness, peace, joy, 
in the Holy Ghost. My dear listener, as you watch your heart, let's see what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5. This podcast will be too long. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 23. It says, Say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Just as Apostle Paul said. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evidence, which are adultery for fornication, uncleanliness, lordness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies. Envy, murder, drunkenness, reveries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand. Just as I also told you in the time past, yes, just as he did, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is, this is what we should harbor in our heart, the fruit of the Spirit. If we look up to the Holy Spirit and look for his leadership and be guided by the Spirit, then we will bear the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, being patient, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. When we walk in the Spirit, and we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we let the Holy Spirit be our leadership and our guide. We bear all these good fruits. These are the fruits we should keep in our spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is also patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. When we are led by the Spirit, there is no law that goes against us. But if we are led by the lust of the flesh, the devil's law goes against us. The systemic laws goes against us. And the law of God comes against us. But if we do not live according to the lust of the flesh and we walk in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says against these things, when we walk according to these things, there is no law that will come against the spiritual system. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. In all your ways, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord and delight yourself in him. He will give you the desires of your hearts and he will order your steps and you will not falter so that no law will come against you so that the enemy don't have an excuse to want to mess up your life because we know he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Until next time, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this videos. Remain blessed. Shalom, peace.